Kyle Busch suffered a race-ending incident during the last playoff race in Texas, and it seems like it has taken a lot bigger toll on the former Candyman than we would have anticipated. The inconsistencies during his regular season have piled up against him, and now he only has two more races to make up for this massive mistake. With how tight the competition is after his latest statements, many NASCAR experts have already expelled him from the playoffs, a picture that we are more than sad to see happening, but it is likely the reality of the remainder of the 2023 season. It goes without saying that Bush was viewed as an outsider in not only the playoffs, but NASCAR's regular season as well. Considering the fact that his move to Richard Childress Racing was more or less a downgrade from JGR. The equipment, the investments, and most importantly, the competitiveness were nowhere near the team he used to spend 15 years with, winning two championships in 2008 and 2015. Still, that is all in the past now, and Bush had one mission ahead of himself to prove that he could win one more even in a less competitive car showing the world that the brutal business model and the sacking of Eminem didn't actually phase him that much. However, after the last wreck in Texas, the one in which he had to retire the car on the 73rd out of 267 laps, the situation has shifted drastically against him now. Before the race, he was 12 points clear of the elimination zone, but entering the next race, Bush is dead last and will likely need at least one win in either Talladega Super Speedway or the Charlotte Motor Speedway road course if he wants to avoid elimination, which, considering how tight the pack is, might not be the best looking scenario for him after all. The worst thing is that Bush had no idea what caused the DNF, and after a couple of calm restarts, he felt like something didn't feel right in the car, right in the moment when he was about to take the lead of the race as well. Elaborating on this soul-crushing situation for his championship hopes, Bush was asked as to how he feels and what went wrong with the car, as he explained, I have no idea. I really felt good when we came off pit road after that green flag stop. The car had good grip in it, and then we got those couple of yellows back to back and we restarted on the outside. It felt like I had a flat right front tire. I was going to come to pit road and I second guessed it and said, I don't think so man, it's just something is wrong. Something isn't right, but it's not a flat and just all on its own just turned into the bottom of the racetrack in turn one and it just swapped ends on me. That's the rear, not the front, not having grip, so I just don't know. It was quite usual to see Bush struggling during the regular part of NASCAR's Cup Series, but this is truly something that makes you feel compassionate for him. An incident that he has no blame to take for, reaching the point of him literally asking fans or the experts to tell him what he needs to do, as he is out of words and actions. There is a lot more time behind this than you originally think, because it's not every day that you can take the soul of a two-time Cup Series winner. And while he definitely has what it takes to get back on the track, this is the playoffs we are talking about. Everyone races with their elbows out, and considering how strong Hendrick Motorsports are with William Byron, who is the clear candidate to win it all along with Denny Hamlin from JGR, I don't think that there are many chances for Bush to bounce back and to continue into the top eight. After passing the first elimination round, Bush is now in a bad place, and he hasn't been shy to share the negative feeling that is surrounding him, as he went on to elaborate. I hate it for everyone on this 3 chai Chevrolet. I felt like our car was for sure a top 5 or top 10 car today. It seems like every time I try, something happens. I crash or whatever. That right there. I just said it two laps before that. I got up on the high side and was like, you know what? I need to stop and just run the bottom. Just make laps here. Just finish the stage and it swaps ends on me. I don't know what to do. If someone wants to tell me what to do, I am all ears. Now there is one positive that Bush can take as he enters the upcoming race in Talladega. This is a race that he won in the regular period of the 2023 Cup Series Championship, so it's definitely a track that he is quite familiar with. His experience should be detrimental here, and you know what they say, champions are molded under pressure, and what better way for Bush to prove that he is one of the greatest drivers to ever do it in this sport than to exit the place he has right now. 17 points below the cut line, than to win in Talladega. This is not where the self ran of Bush stops, as he took things to further extent and continued. I'm a complete letdown to my team right now, not being able to get the results that we need. Every time we try, I crash. It's like the less I try, I ride around the better days we have. He was asked about his inner feeling about the upcoming race in Talladega, and what does he think about a repeat, as his negativity continued. Not very good but we're going to go there and fight as hard as we can and run hard. RCR has had a strong restrictor plate program, so that's all we could do. 
If you don't believe us that Bush has what it takes to grab it all in Talladega, you just have to go and ask Denny Hamlin what he feels about his former teammate's playoff hopes. It goes without saying that the mutual respect between these two is through the roof. And while Hamlin is very close to the championship and earning the first one after 18 years with JGR, he couldn't write off his former teammate from the fight as well. Elaborating, I don't know whether my opinion of Bush changed since he moved from JGR. I mean, I think maybe the field does feel different. I don't necessarily. I still know that he's great. He can carry a fair amount of equipment. That's assuming that equipment is not 100%, which I think it probably is. No, I don't personally look at him any differently. I think it's kind of like absent blows, though, of who's running good right now. But even Hamlin himself couldn't have hidden the disappointment of the track surface and difficulty it posed for its drivers. And when talking about this, he might have hinted that the nature of the Texas Speedway had something to do with Bush's retirement. Furthermore, he added, It's just a rough track. When SMI reconfigured this thing, we just swung and missed on it for sure, so I don't know what you do with it. The next-gen car is really great on all other mile and a halves. It's just this one. There's just no tire fall off. I did the tire test, but Goodyear is always going to choose the most durable tire they can to not blow out, and when you have that, you're not going to have any fallout, so you're going to have guys with old tires go out there and win. The same opinion was shared by Kyle Larson, who feels like NASCAR did an awful job by restructuring the race and slowing down the natural process of tire degradation, which might cause drivers to win with blunt tactics pointing out that turns 1 and 2 are the ones that need the most help, but as of now, they are not workable on. The remainder of the race was definitely a gem to watch, as William Byron went on to win and advanced to the NASCAR playoff round of 8. There was definitely an advantage he managed to utilize to his own favor after the late restart chaos, claiming the 300th win for his team in the Cup Series and the 6th one of his own in the 2023 season. Right now, there's no doubt that he's the favorite to win the championship, and while he was not involved for most of the race, he managed to put the car where it needed to be at the right time, beating Bubba Wallace on the final restart and pulling away from Ross Chastain in the process. What is also a very interesting feature is the fact that Byron didn't even lead a single lap before the final restart, and while it seemed like the Alabama native had everything under control and he would emerge as the race winner, the 2311 racing driver let Briscoe take his line and keep him from the bottom, which Byron used to his own advantage and completed a very smooth pass. But these actions are more or less shadowed by the poor performance of Kyle Busch, and when it rains, it pours. It was not just a bad race or a bad day, it was a soul-crushing experience for the former Candyman, especially because he has such a great mountain to climb right now. For things to be worse for Richard Childress Racing, Tyler Reddick didn't really manage to wash their name in Texas, and the points battle moving forward between him and Bush would definitely be a highlight to watch for in the upcoming races. If Bush has yet another bad day in Talladega, which would be him anywhere outside the top five or a race win depending on the rest of the grid, then it's game over for him and he would have to wave goodbye to his championship hopes. Do you think that this is a likable scenario for the former Candyman? Let us know in the comments below.